<laughs> All right, perfect. Well, our next guest is Stacy Chalimi. And so we are going to have a conversation with her. She is just such a superstar. And um, so Stacy, if you, for our audience, um, I think that they would be amazed to know about your background. Stacy started in in writing many years ago and um she has been in the media with dateline and she has had quite the journey to coming to have her podcast the podcast the advisor sorry the advisor with stacy chillamy and so if you could tell us more stacy and you know for our audience that you know maybe they've started they've made it through the eight podcast mark you know and they're saying now what <laughs> <laughs> tell, us, tell us more about about you and about what we do when we get to that point. <laughs> well, you know, I when I went into podcast and I didn't even even think that I was going in this direction. You know, it, it began uh, many moons ago, like from the age of five, I had developed a virus and it had tur uh, turned into encephalitis that traveled to my brain and I was left in a coma for four days. My parents thought I was going to be either paraplegic or I'll have severe brain damage because that's what was told to them by the doctors. So my father who prayed by my bedside, he uh, sat there and he prayed and he thought about a Greek statue in Greece that used to go by the church and teardrops was known to come out of its eyes. And on the fourth day, a teardrop rolled from my eyes and I woke up and I looked at him and I asked him for McDonald's French fries. And <laughs> I wasn't paraplegic and I didn't have severe brain damage, but I was left with epilepsy. And my life was like a roller coaster ride throughout my entire life. I had my ups and downs, a lot of challenges along the way. Even in college, I didn't know if I was going to be able to actually um, survive because of the, all the seizures. And I had reached out and wrote a letter and they published it in a magazine. And I got three to 400 articles from all over the United States and Canada, people sharing how they cope with it and how they live with it. And it was very inspiring. I actually created my own regiment and I learned from it and I was able to get through um, in my college years and go into my adulthood years with this regiment. And I was also um, able to uh, write a book later on called um, Epilepsy, You're Not Alone, which helped many people. And actually a person wrote to me and thanked me because I saved their life because they were on the verge of suicide and they found my book in Barnes and Nobles. And, you know, I, I was consistently writing, trying to help others because I realized that regimen could help more than just me with epilepsy. It could help people all over with all different conditions, including stress. So, you know, I kept writing and writing. And then I got to a point where I, I, I something just said, I need more. Like, you know, you get to that point in life where you just know you, you need it for a change in life, but you don't know really what it is. And I started with podcasting and I wasn't even really thinking about it, a friend threw it out there and, and had um, said, you really need to, you know, have your voice be heard. And I started with podcasts and, and within three months, I was booked for a year. And it just, the, the podcast just blew up. People wanted to hear what I had to say. And I, you know, I based it on self-improvement because I feel like self-improvement is so important in our society. A lot of times we don't work on ourselves. We worry about everybody else. We do for everybody else. But the last person we worry about is ourselves. And I, you know, for me, you need your mental health your mental if you don't have your mental health you don't have your physical health if you don't have physical health your spirituality is going to be affected if your spirituality is affected you can't really operate on a full load and then you have trouble at work and if you have trouble at work it goes home it's a it's a circle so it's kind of like the circle of life and in my show i teach people i have people from all walks of life that you know I specialize in different areas to show people you know give them help them with all the different areas that they might be lacking it. And in the beginning, I didn't focus, I just focused on one specific niche. But as I went along and as I got to know my audience, I realized that there was more than one niche involved, that they they were, you know, people, my audience actually was telling me that they wanted more. They needed to hear about more things in more areas. And I was able to grow from that. That's fantastic. And and so tell us more, because I know you're a, a 20 times best-selling author. And um, and to have these these media opportunities and things, if we haven't written a book yet and we're not, you know, a celebrity in the media, <laughs> what can we do now to to move us forward with our podcast journey, to grow our podcast, to grow our audience, and to to make that difference? Because so many of us we just have such a passion about what we're doing, but we're like, how can I get that out there? <laughs> you know, the, the one thing, even a mistake of my own, is that 
I did I focused on the beginning of what I thought people would want to hear. And when I actually started to look at not just the metrics, but I started to put polls out there asking people what you wanted to hear, what were you interested in? What do you want to learn about? Tell me, I want I needed to learn who my audience was because once I was able to understand what my audience needs were, I was able to cater to them. And that's how the podcast started to grow. It was no longer about me. It was how do I service my audience? Oh, wow. I love that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really awesome. And when it comes to monetizing, do you have any tips on how to convert the audience into a potential client? So what I did was is that I focused on the I looked at the type of people that were coming on the podcast. And so I had people on my podcast. I had three different types. I had one where they didn't have a podcast, but they had a lot of great information and knowledge to share with the world. Then I had people who came on the podcast and they were kind of they had a podcast, but they were plateaued and they were having trouble growing it. And then I had people who came on that had very busy lives that wanted to get their voice heard, just didn't have the time to do it. So I catered not just to the audience. I, I focused more on the people that were coming on the show and then creating services because I had a, a very extensive background in marketing and advertising and, and I knew how to you know get the word out there. And because I understood the, the podcasting business so well at this point, I was able to create services to help these three types of individuals grow their careers in a different area that they wanted to be in, but they just didn't either have the time or the knowledge. And those are, that's actually how I grew my, my monetization is by focusing on the people that came on the show that were really serious about growing and, and, and really getting their message out because it's not so much about the, the money part. It was getting that message out. And I wanted people who were serious, wanted to make a change in the world and wanted to do better because that's what it's all about. You know, money always follows through later on, but you know, if you do the right thing, everything else follows through like a snowball. So it's really getting your, your mission and your core values in line and really think about, you know, stop thinking about the dollar bill. Think about why you got into this in the first place, you know, get that, that humbleness back and think about what you really want to accomplish. Cause that's the type of people you want on your show. And then the audience is going to pick up on that right away. So, you know, people aren't stupid, you know, so you really want loving, kind individuals who want to change the world, come on your show and make a huge impact. And that helps the growth of the audience. Yeah. Wow. Sure. Yeah, and what's amazing because you know Sandy is so in tune with energy and things like that, and and she has such a loving presence like you. And I think that that you're right. You know that that comes through even on a podcast online through the airwaves. <laughs> you know we can just we can just feel it. And so, and to then you know have your guest have that same alignment with that kind of energy just just continues all the the love that is going out and coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so Stacy, um, can you, you know, being being so aware of social media and and utilizing, you know, social media to do those kinds of things. So now you're in alignment, you have the guests that have the loving energy as well. How do you use social media and other digital platforms to promote your podcast? So I think it's so important to be able to use social media as a leverage. A lot of people that I speak with, you know, um, in businesses, they don't utilize their, the social media because um, they don't realize the value of it. But that's where everybody is. So if you, you really focus on each social media has their own audience, has their own educational level, has their um, own age group. And you really have to look at each platform and really, you know, cater to each different platform and getting the message out according to the way they think. And also look at your metrics again. What type of people are on your platforms? And that's how you're going to message out to the social media. But the social media is, is a vital component in today's marketing world because everything is going digital. It's really no longer, you're not gonna, you know, magazine ads and magazines, when, you know, how many times does people buy magazines in a magazine store, you know, in the grocery market, when you can get it online and easily pop onto it and, and read everything, it's all digital. So marketing to your audience and more in every, in every platform is different. So you can't just copy and paste the same thing on every single one of them. You have to create and make everything unique according to that audience that is watching you and listening to you. 
Wow. Yeah, that's really, that's really true. Cause I, I mean, it's so true with the different age groups and, and, and things they, you know, the first one started, then the next one started and, and the younger people gravitated, you know, to that. So that's, that's really, really helpful. And then as far as like the key metrics and tools that, that, you know, as we're learning and we're promoting, what would you suggest for these podcasters that are, that are starting out and, and that are moving into the more advanced podcasting? What would you recommend for that? I like Google Analytics. You know, people don't utilize that enough, but if you go on Google Webmaster, Google Analytics, you'll see who's coming on to your platforms. You'll see the type of people, the age groups, the demographics, where are they coming from, and you'll be able to have a better understanding of who your audience is. And as I mentioned earlier, polls are great too, because if you give them, you know, you don't want to give them too many choices. I would say, you know, two to three and, and max. In a, and ask different questions. Look at what's trending. The one thing people don't realize is that if you go on to Google and you type in a word or you type in a phrase, you're going to get questions on the on that, that page. And those are the most prevalent questions that people are asking on the internet. So if you type in red shoes, all of a sudden you're going to hear a bunch of see a bunch of questions from Google about red shoes. Well, this is what people want to know about red shoes. It goes the same with self-care, self-love, kindness, you know, everything. So you want to cater to your, 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 your major audience. Look at those questions, see how they relate to you, see how you could turn them into something, you know, that will help your podcast, you know, and if your podcast is on a specific topic, type in a phrase or a couple of phrases and see what questions come out and use those questions and Put them out there in the social media and put, you know, and this is how you start to market and you start to you know, create articles too. Articles are amazing. People don't, you know, give them enough of credit, but, you know, the authority of articles is very prevalent in our society. People still like to read, even though they say we have a low retention span, they're still reading out there. They still like it, you know, give them a short reel and put link it to a, to an article and I guarantee you they'll go to it. <laughs> wow. Could you give us <laughs> example of doing that that you have done <laughs> it works <laughs> yeah. could you tell us a story of how you've done that yeah sure you know so i had created a website so i had met with an herbalist the herbalist um had had me do a lot of write, read, research and writing on natural remedies i was i was amazed with natural remedies i applied it to my life I was able to get my epilepsy under control. So with the help of natural healing and holistic living, I got my, my, my epilepsy under control. I said, wow, this could help everybody. Holistic living is amazing. And this is when it first came out. I created a website with over 5,000 articles and a good majority that were written by me. And I put, I put, would put out content when you know i would put out videos and then the reels came later on you know that showed you how old i am and i would put the links to the articles and so people would get a taste of it they would you know and especially when reels came out and then i would link it right to the article and so and i would take the best parts so i would take the take the most inquisitive parts you want to give a hook liner so people sometimes give too much information you want to give them just enough of information where they're like what's next you know and when as soon as they say what's next well, here's my link and you'll find out. And they go right to the article and they end up reading the article. And if you allow comments, they'll comment. That's even better because if you got really good comments, you'll understand your audience even better. And then you can cater to more and more to them as well. Okay. So you're saying the LinkedIn platform, make a link to LinkedIn. Is that, did I understand that correctly? No, make a, so you, you create the reels and then you put like a hook liner and you give them, you make the reel so it, it it you gets them enticed. So you don't give them the answer in the reel. They want to know what the answer is. And then you put in there, you put a link and you put the link where the content is and it draws them right to the content. And then they end up reading the content because they want to find out more. You entice them, you got you, you increase their curiosity and you made them more, um, more willing and, and excitable to, you know, and eager to learn about the topic. But LinkedIn is an amazing site. And I suggest that to everybody. It's an amazing site for, uh, to grow your business podcast. It just has a lot of lead magnets that people are not aware of. And that's a huge market. It, it to begin with, we could have a whole conversation about that. Yes, we could. And and you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the time over to Sandy because Sandy has been heavily involved with media as well. She's been on television just like you have been, Stacy. And so, Sandy, with your background in television and and other media, 
what questions would you like to ask Stacy to help our podcasters out there? Yeah, so I was I was actually going to ask about repurposing podcast episodes and what do you recommend um, for podcasters to repurpose? Like in what format should they repurpose? Can they repurpose it and turn it into an article? What do you recommend in order? Because like for me, episode 350 is coming out on Wednesday of this week. And I'm like, I've got a lot of content and I don't, I'm not very good at like, like we just talked to David Meltzer, who's, you know, I probably need to need to sit down with him and like talk about how do I repurpose all this content? Because he's really, that's kind of his jam. So what's the best way to repurpose our content? Because I have so much. All right, I'll, I'll give you some secrets. I'll let out some of my <laughs> secrets. So I write an, I, 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 uh, so let's say I create an episode. I take that episode and I create a newsletter from that episode. I go into the transcripts. I create a newsletter. I take that newsletter and I put it on LinkedIn. LinkedIn has all, uh, they have all business oriented individuals or p people who are looking to advance themselves further in life. So you make a newsletter, you create a, a topic, you have your episode, you have a link to your episode and you sh can share a picture related to the episode in there. So right away, they're signing up for your newsletter on LinkedIn. You've got yourself a lead magnet. So now you have someone that you know is interested in your content. You take that and then you also turn it into um, a reel. You take the reels and you put the reels on all the social networks and you take them accordingly to that audience. And then you can also take the segment and you can take the transcript and you can create an easily to create an article. You can create several articles off of, of, of a transcript, depending on how long the episode is. And you create bullet points and then you put links to the different services and different things that you have to offer or maybe more episodes related to that. And you, then you can put a sign up. Always have a call to action on all these things. Everything that you create, a call to action. People forget that. And you know these are the important factors. So you can make newsletters. You can make articles. You can make interviews. You can get permission and say, can I turn this transcript into an interview? Because you did a great episode. And you know most likely they will say yes because it's no work on their part, just ours. And so now you have, you have an interview written. You have content, informational content written. You have a newsletter on LinkedIn. You can take that newsletter letter, put it on your own, your own um, newsletter, well, your own newsletter list. So now you have you have four big areas that you've just achieved. And then you have all these reels going out. And you could also you can create, you know, a con you can create content because you have your episode, you can, you know, you have the, the episode itself. So you've hit five broad areas that could bring in tons of new audience and make your previous audience very happy. And as we know, as you know, Sandy, the best um, type of uh, marketing is word of mouth. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Is there is there an overkill like when it comes to promoting one podcast interview or one podcast episode? What, what, what would you say about that? Because sometimes I feel like either there's got to be that happy medium in between. Sometimes it's too much and sometimes it's not enough. What would you say that you found that good number, the sweet sauce? So what I like to do is I make, I make each one so different that it seems like I'm talking about something completely different. Or I focus in on one specific area that I think is really going to really make the audience um, interested according to what's trending in, in today's Google area and today's uh, platforms, what's trended. Okay, this person talked about this. How can I expand this? And then you could even add some of your own bullet points and you could add quotes from the person. There's so many different ways where you could even create your article, but then create a portion of the episode as a quote, you know, from the person. And then you could give that person credit and give them a link to, to theirs. So you have the person who did the episode who's very happy because they just got some extra coverage. You've got yourself coverage because and your 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 bosses are very happy and your ratings are going up and you get new audience and you make your old audience happy. So I don't really think there's an overkill as long as you do it the right way. If you're saying the same message over and over again, then it's overkill. But if you make it so unique where it doesn't, they don't even realize new title, new content, new beginning, new closing. It just, it, they don't, it, it's, the two don't um, really clash. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And Stacy, I, I wanted to know, we have just a few more minutes. Um, I wanted to know um, if you, if you were going to give advice to us to 
you know, pitch to a to somebody else in the media that we wanted to share our story. Being on that end where people were pitching to you, what would you recommend? So I, I think when we pitch to other people, the most effective way is is opening up with you know, explaining why it's so important to have their voice known and, you know, and how it could benefit them. And, you know, and people already that already have achieved a certain level of success might say, I don't need any more. But then you focus on the message. That's what people, true, true people who are humble and very successful don't care about the money, they care about the message. So you focus on how you can get that message across and how you could change people's lives with what they're trying to achieve. Now that will get a celebrity or that will get somebody in a high status um, position interested because they got into this position because they wanted their voice known, because they have a message. So you focus on the message. You don't focus on how great we are and talk about the, the Los Angeles tri uh, Tribune, even though you guys are amazing. When we do, we do our pitch, we talk about them and their important message and how we can broaden it and share it with the world and how it can make such a difference in other people's lives, which it can. So it, that's what I think really you know, gets other people's attention that are in a high status, high ticketed area. Yeah, well, take it from someone from Dateline who should know. <laughs> That's amazing. Any any last words of wisdom that you would like to share about you and maybe a story, Stacey, that our, our audience, you know, could relate to? I just want to share with people that, you know, we all go through something. Everybody has a story and everybody matters. And I think voices should be heard. And a lot of times people don't think, you know, the, what they have to say matters, but it does. You know, the littlest things in life are so important. And if you tell a story and you are sincere about it, the littlest thing in that story it could just be one sentence can change another person's life forever. The wisdom of words are so powerful. And let your voice be heard. You know, whether you're in a grocery store talking to a woman that looks sad or whether you're, you know, on TV or whether you're in front of the camera, you know, doing like a podcast like we are, let your voice be heard because, you know, it is so important to get the messages out. And like the gentleman before us, he talked about lo gratitude, love, kindness, and gratitude go a long way. And that's why I made the journal of um, the positivity and gratitude journal, because without those things in life, you, you will not be fulfilled and people have to have more, especially in this, these, this time of age where, you know, there's a lot of hate and anger and we really have to be, have gratitude for what we have. And so share your story, share your kindness, share your love and, and, and have gratitude for what you have. Spend a couple of days, you know, a couple of moments each day and look at the things that you are, you should have gratitude for. Cause when we, we forget sometimes what we, what we, what we uh, have and we focus on what we don't have, but you know, stories need to be heard. Just like I told you about that story, that woman read my book and it saved her life. You never know, you know, what your what you could do, how powerful your words can be and share it with, with somebody. And you can, you know, there's so many things that could, you can change someone's life just by giving them a little motivation, inspirational and, and help and, and making people realize that they are wonderful inside and out. <laughs> and you and you are wonderful inside and out. In <laughs> fact, you and Sandy, I feel like we sisters, you know, and, and it's just it's just <laughs> it's so wonderful because you know you both are so aligned and you are both so loving and you are both motivated by the love that you have for others. And and it's just it's such a privilege to to be with both of you. You are amazing mentors in my life. I've met both of you in person and I, I, I kept wishing that I could so that I could hug you in person. And when I did, it just was like, oh just felt so <laughs> it felt so wonderful <laughs> oh thank you well you know i i wanted to add that stacy was awarded the top entrepreneur in 2023 by apple news and so not only does she have the love and the heart and the why that drives her the media background and the you know the expertise in marketing and and growing but um she has the expertise in the business world as well. <laughs> and so combine all that with your, your love for people and your passion for sharing your message. What a, what a just all around perfect package tied up with a bow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.
This has been a pleasure. I really appreciate having both of you um, have me on your show. And I really do appreciate this time you've given me to share with the world my story and and, and to talk about the, the podcast as well. Well, thank you. And the advisor with Stacy Chalimi, I want, hope all of you can go and look that up and learn more about Stacy. And I'm sure we'll be hearing more from you in the future because this was such great value. In fact, I'm going to have to go back and, and re-listen to it again and again. And I couldn't take notes fast enough. I'm sure Sandy felt the same way. <laughs> so thank you so much for being with us, Stacy. And we look forward to having you again. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And I look forward to it as well. Thank you, both of you. All right. Bye-bye now. Bye bye. All right. Well, fantastic. And so we are just, Sandy, was that, I mean, we, you have so much more media background than I do. But what were some of your thoughts as you, as you heard Stacy? Well, you know, I love how she was sharing the repurposing of the content because I find that as a podcaster, we have so much, you know, you do a 30 minute interview and, and it's just, and then you you released one episode or like me, I do two episodes a week. So I have eight episodes a month. I mean, it's so much content. And sometimes I find it to be like a little overwhelming. And so I really like how she broke down how you can repurpose the content and gave us specific examples and how to do it. Um, so that that was really, really valuable for me. Yeah, so many times you get these general, you get these general topics like, oh, we'll go on social media and just, you know, do repurpose it, and you're like, but, but wait, <laughs> or just boost yeah. it, or just, you know, get out there and share your story, and and then you're like, but how? <laughs> and so to be able to hear those specific hows, I mean, each of our guests, you know, Sam and David, they they just gave those specifics that are so helpful when when we 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 wanted we want to get that message out there. We have so much we want to say, and we but we want the people to hear it. We don't want to just have our mother hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think also some of, you know, for me, everything I do is intentional, right? And so if you're making the post and you're repurposing content in an intentional way, the right people are going to hear it because the people are going to show up. And, and David was talking about this as well, you know, and Sam touched on it as well, this, you know, earlier, it's the frequency. And if you're showing up in that frequency, you're going to attract people that are in that same frequency as well. And so it will be people that are different from your mom. Cause I know my mom has never listened to one episode of mine <laughs> ever. <laughs> and she never will. And that's okay. <laughs> it happens. It happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. so, yeah. yeah. I, I, I just think that it's, it's something that we just, you know, we just really want to know the how part, you know, those specifics and, and what do we do? So, so that's, that's great to know. 